family and welcome back to the channel. My name is Romeo and we have an exciting AMA with Victory Finance today. Join me as I speak with core team members Ferdi and Minri on how Victory Finance aims to create a safe haven for global DeFi and NFT investors. As always, OIG family, we need your support. So if you like the content, remember to subscribe, hit the bell notification button and smash the like button to help OIG reach the moon. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the AMA. Welcome back, OIG family, to another episode in our AMA series. Today, I'm joined by Ferdi and Minri from Victory. They're going to tell us a lot about Victory as well as what they can provide for the blockchain industry. Welcome, Ferdi and Minri. How's it going today? I guess, Ferdi, could you t start with telling us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and how you came to be involved with Victory? Yeah, awesome. Uh, Romeo, thanks for having us on today. So, yeah. Uh, just to give a little bit of introduction, uh, I work as a business lead for Big Tree Finance and for Big Tree X and the collective as a whole. And uh, regarding my entrance to Big Tree, I spent a few years in Korea and there I was introduced to rather, I would say, the blockchain space and crypto as a whole. I've been in the space since 2017, but I kind of tapered off after 2018, the bear market and all of that. In 2020, I saw, you know, Bitcoin running up to 13, 14,000. I was like, hey, man, okay, I think it's time to join. And uh, I spent a little bit too much time, you know, researching DeFi. And uh, then I found myself earlier in, I would say, about four or five months ago, I got an opportunity to work at Big Tree. And once I saw what they were doing, you know, not building one project, but building three projects at the same time. You know, it was an ambitious team and I, I, w I was searching for opportunity to get into the space. And, you know, it's since there, it's been full steam ahead. So, yeah, that's basically a general introduction of uh, of me. Thanks, Romeo. Yeah. And Minri? Hi, guys. So I'm Minri. I'm the head of NFT and as well as Concordium Name Services. So I've been with Victory for over a year. And I started as a product owner and then I shifted to a more department role head. And then basically I'm managing, I'm still managing the product development side of things. So I'm in charge of UI, UI UX design. I'm in charge of developer delivery and at the same time making friends with the creators. And yeah, so I, I got into the Web3 space when it was last year or 2021 when everything is booming in NFTs. And I saw it like, oh, it's interesting. It's fun. And then there's cute pictures with cute utilities so um i got my feet wet there and then now i ventured into crypto but previously my work is is in the um, e-commerce space so basically i was a um e-commerce manager in another startup in the philippines but i think there's a lot of synergy with um the nft the crypto space um being the future commerce of the world. So I'm interesting on how it's going to play out. For <laughs> so sure. yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, quite a lot to jump into here. And, uh, you know, maybe we can, uh, Ferdy, we can start with uh, something you just mentioned, which is uh, the fact that, you know, their, their victory is building, you know, three projects. What, what do you mean by that? Let, let's start from the very beginning. What to, to people that have no idea what victory is. What would okay. You yeah, so if I had to describe Big Tree, it would be as follows. So Big Tree Finance is a fintech collective rather than a company or a project. And Big Tree Finance's goal is to develop blockchain agnostic financial solutions. So it's not just um, linked to a specific chain like, let's say, ETH or SOL or BSC or NEO. So we're looking to develop blockchain agnostic solutions for the whole Web 3.0 space. So Big Tree Finance in its suite of products currently has a centralized exchange called Big Tree X a multi-chain NFT marketplace integrated with Concordium as well as Solana. And then the Concordium name service, similar to, you know, SNS and ENS on Sol and ETH, which is built with our partner, the Concordium Foundation, also the blockchain upon which Victory was built. So we are not just a singular project. It is three projects, a ecosystem as a whole. And yes, we are looking to onboard individuals, not just to a singular project, but rather the Victory Finance Collective. And I would say the end goal of Big Tree Finance is not just to develop projects here and, you know, have a sex or an NFT marketplace as well as, you know, the, the naming service, but to, I would say, branch out to different blockchains as well. So our main goal is to become blockchain agnostic, whereas, you know, it's not just ETH, it's SOL or BSC, it's everything. So, yeah, we want to cater for the whole Web 3.0 space and whatever is needed, we want to build. Excellent, excellent. And uh, yeah, like, 
very very interesting to hear that uh, description of a fintech collective like you mentioned um, obviously uh, looking into the future as well as these past couple of years we, we see the power that fintech has provided to uh, a lot of areas with uh, technology in general and and innovation so that is probably uh, well it is the leading edge the cutting edge of uh, this industry as well um, so very interesting to hear there um, so I guess looking at it from a global perspective, uh, w why do you think, or what what void is Victory Finance looking to fill within the blockchain industry as well as fintech? Okay, yeah. So I think that's a very good question. So thanks for that. So let's look at DeFi, and I would like to take you back to 2020 and 2021. So you had this bear market from 2018 to 2020 where everything was kind of dead then COVID came and like you know this massive crash and then suddenly you just saw this unholy boom across you know technological companies web 3.0 space and it attracted a lot of capital but at the same time it also attracted a lot of bad actors mm -hmm. and if you look at the amount of rug pulls and not just the amount, but the amount stolen in 2021, I think, and don't quote me on these figures, but I believe it's about 2.1 billion US dollars. Wow. So that is a significant amount of money. And, you know, especially in the web 3.0 space, sometimes we kind of live in an eco chamber where we're all like, you know, this is the future, this is what we want to do, everybody is going to get on board it. But a lot of the applications and uh, I would say structures of Web 3.0 aren't very user friendly, or rather, not user friendly for you know an individual who has never gotten into the space. Because now we're working on DeFi and DEXs and all of this, but many people, most people in this space, they don't operate on you know, let's say something like DEX tools or like or DEX on a, on chain. You know, it's kind of like either Binance or Coinbase or Kraken. So that's kind of like where they come initially, and they start from let's say BDC, Ethereum. Let's call the top ten. And then they start exploring ecosystems. So what we wanted to build is that we wanted to provide a platform where we can enable the mass onboarding of users, not only from the web 3.0 space, but also from a traditional finance sector. And that is why we chose Concordium initially as a blockchain we built Victory upon because of their focus on something that we term RegFi, you know, regulation finance. And I know this might sound a little bit bad, you know, considering the ethos of the web 3.0 space, but we wanted to build products and an ecosystem where people, investors, and institutions would feel comfortable investing their money and know that when we transact with this platform or within this ecosystem, that we will feel safe, secure, and that we will not be, um, let's say, a victim of a rug pull or you know malicious coding or anything like that. Because let's just look at what happened to Luna earlier this year. Yeah. That's $60 billion of market cap just wiped it just got it just done and i mean up until now no recourse has been established or you know it's just doquan memes and doquan inu and all of that so that's pretty much it and when you're looking from a traditional perspective you know somebody who's yet to join the space and they look at ust and the history of ust as a stable coin one of the biggest stable coins pre-collapse you know you had busd usd usdt usdc ust yes and 60 or 18 billion dollars collapsed done how do we expect individuals to join this space and how do we expect to grow this space and to accelerate mass adoption if situations like this aren't you know it's not the exception you know it rug rug pulls rug pulls rug pulls we need to to focus on improving this so yeah victory finance you know is developed in a in a safe fashion or rather not a safe fashion but we wanted to make sure you know that investors are safe because that is our main priority to ensure that this is a safe space to transact also regulatory compliance and yes to accelerate the mass adoption of the web 3.0 space as a whole we want to play our part in it and uh, yes that is why we are here definitely uh like you mentioned you know building that trust with uh the consumer base or, or users in general that is key for maintaining the integrity of the blockchain industry and uh you know like uh it's very unfortunate uh, and I, I was one of the people that suffered from from uh that ust uh, exploit but um 
you know, it, it's just it just goes to show you how early on we are in the road to what you're you're describing, which is a, a very trustworthy, uh, low barrier to entry uh, environment, right? And um, eventually we we will get there. We are learning. And uh, one of the other things that you mentioned, which I think is key, is just the lack of uh, well enforcement, right? Re uh, and repercussions for these kind of actions. There's you know, sixty billion dollars vanished, and what what happens really? What's yeah, uh, and also yeah. in terms of accountability, I think it's something that we as Big Tree, once we started on this journey, and once I came along, um, we as the team decided that look, we want to partner up with individuals that take the space as serious as we do. And I like what you said, we are still learning as a space collectively. You know, we'll make mistakes and we'll continue building and improving, but you know, this is the future. You know, it's it's as clear to me and to you and to Minri. I mean, the rest of the planet doesn't know it, you know, but it is the future. You know, our younger generations, millennials, Gen Z, Gen X, whatever. This is how we will proceed. But yes, we decided to to partner up with, uh, I would say, the premier KYC company in the kind of like a DeFi space, Assure KYC or Assure DeFi rather. And, you know, it's been brilliant for us in terms of, you know, integrating with their network and ensuring that once projects list on Big Tree X, and not just on Big Tree X, also on the NFC side, which is Minri's domain, that they will be fully KYC. So not doxed, you know, this is privately done, but investors will feel comfortable investing in either Big Tree X, the NFT product projects, and once again, to ensure that, you know, everything is compliant. And if something were to happen, that a legal recourse is possible. So once again, our main focus, and it's a bit of a cliche, is to ensure the comfort, uh, the, the comfort of investors, as well as you know, be, being able to transact securely. So investors are on the forefront of our mind, and it's not just a, it's not just you know something that we're trying to say. It's that if you want to make money, not just in the NFT space or the DeFi space, TradFi, whatever. The first question you've got to ask yourself is, how will we add value? And if you can answer that question, that is how you grow as a company, that is how you grow as a space, and that is how you grow as an industry. You need to be able to focus on adding value, not just extracting it, because people are generally good at the latter, but not as great at the former. So yeah, that's kind of like our main focus, Romeo. 100%. And uh, you know, uh, speaking of the uh, value add, uh, I'll, it's clear during you know uh, market downturns such as the one we're kind of in right now, uh, the projects that survive, and I've mentioned this in, in a lot of my po uh, podcasts, is the, the, the things that separate a successful project from one that isn't is the utility, the, the value add, like you mentioned. And uh, so I guess we could even just use that to jump into uh, you know the features that uh, Victory is, is hoping to... Uh, you know, incorporate to really separate itself from the from the uh, competition. So, in terms, uh, like what Freddie mentioned, we have a lot of products <laughs> and a lot of utilities. <laughs> but of course, on the Victory NFT side, uh, of course, Victory NFT was first built in Consortium. So we're a grantee from Consortium. We got we got a funding or a grant from them to build a regulatory compliant NFT project and then plus the KYC side of things. But the different, the utility side is uh, we kind of like try to influence these creators to create um, NFTs with utility because anyone can be an artist. Anyone can create cute NFTs, animals, but at the same time, what kind of value they can provide to the holders. And that's the that's what's the foundation of Victory NFT. So we work with, um, we, we don't choose our, our creators basically, but we actually, um, if, they're, if they want to be part of our rosters of artists, we give them like crash courses. We, we tell them that, hey, um, this is created for the holders or this is created for the crypto space or the ecosystem. It needs to create more value. Like if you can give like um, airdrops, if you can add like a CNS domain in your project, or if you can add exclusivity or access to certain things as a project, then that's a great utility. And of course, it's, it's, it's not about like what everyone else is doing. You also have to think about what kind of like passion you're putting into the creators like for example we have creators who advocates for mental health mm -hmm. so she wants to do fundraising for mental health self-awareness so those kinds of things and 
of course, the holders would resonate with them. So aside from the creator side, we also have the NFT side, which is our NFT. So our NFT, the Terrestra X or the Terrestra NFT, it's kind of like an intersection of culture, community, and of course, it's backed by the creators and inspired by our products. So the Terrestra X is actually a utility-based NFT that you can use in the marketplaces. You can potentially use on the exchange. And that NFT gives you a discount. That NFT gives you airdrop tokens, um, holders access basically to our um, ecosystem. So it's not just about um, hold, and of course, being able to trade it and use it to your um, to future projects. And we do plan to create cross collaboration and partnerships with other projects as well. So at least like our NFT is not just going to be for the project, but also for our creators as well. Um, they can use that to get um, discounts. They can use that for listing rewards, for buying rewards. So there's a lot of information about that. Maybe I can share the white paper to you guys, or you can check it out on our website in victory.io. But basically th that's pretty much it. And then our roadmap is not very um, fixed. So we actually listen to our community. So if our community feels like that we want to add more things that they see in the space, we're going to do it. But of course, if it's going if it, to if it's gonna have more demand to it. But the most important thing is um, a project doesn't just start with the idea that this is the fixed roadmap. This is what we're going to do. It's just the vision. But how the people are going to buy it and use it in the future, it's going to come from the community. So NFTs is pretty much backed by the community and the utilities will foster or grow within that community. So we really have a great creator community and we're really catering our NFTs to our creators and at the same time to our users and Victory Finance community as well. And hopefully in other communities that we get, we get to be part of. But of course, we're trying to build our own community, which we're going to be able to give more value to them through utilities or NFTs. So I hope I made some sense there. <laughs> oh, 100%. And, and yeah. you know, one of the key things that you mentioned, which I think is is integral to, to really having... <clears throat> A successful uh, project is like you said the inclusive or the inclusion of your community and and what they think really they're the ones that are going to be using this product and and interacting with the, within the environment so you want to make sure that they have a cohesive experience and that means you got to listen to them and you know just mentioning the malleability of the the nft project as well it just shows that you know you're, you're willing to change if it's for the better right and and that that's key uh, so I guess, uh, Ferdy, maybe we can jump a little into uh, yeah, X. yeah. Okay, so yeah, just to add there uh, on Monero side on the NFT side, just quickly, um, you know, the Terrestrial X collection will also be incorporated into the Victory X solution as well, kind of like a a tokenized or a gated access. So yeah, it it, it will be part of our whole ecosystem. But yeah, in terms of Victory X, you know, I also want to relate to what Monero was saying. There is that you know we're very community focused and. What we've seen, let's say, since 2017, 2018, is that there were a legion of exchanges that jumped up. So let's not talk about the top tier ones like Binance, Kraken, Coinbase. You know, nobody's going to challenge them in the immediate. You know, these are very well-established giants, behemoths, whatever you want to call them. But then in, let's call it the tier two and tier three exchanges, a lot of them exist solely for the purpose of existing you know they have been here for a few years let's say 2018 they decided to create an exchange and then suddenly you know due to the influx of volume or retail participation in 2020 they just boomed but where we as big tree we're trying to do it a little bit different because we want not only to list project but also to help these communities grow because as the space grows we grow as well so we go to projects who we are looking to list and we actively decide, you know, let's help you with marketing, you know, let's help you with community building, let's help you with growth and engagement and all, you know, these strategies. So we want to foster an inclusive ecosystem. And, you know, one of the things that I think makes Big Tree unique from its competitors is not only, you know, it is, we've got free project, but everything is linked. There's a plan behind everything. And as Manu said, the roadmap is also flexible in the sense that we listen to our community and we decide to build and, you know, proceed with this. And I, I think a, a good example of that would be Big Tree X right now. So there's a blockchain with a name called Aptos, the Aptos blockchain, you know, developed by these, um, I think these ex-meta employees. And, you know, it's kind of like all the hype right now. 
And I think, you know, uh, I can't remember when, but it goes main, but main at the token, but I think it's either, you know, within this month or, or whatever. But we're looking to migrate to where the volume is, to where the activity is, to where the engagement is, and say that, hey, you know what, your new project, we like what you're doing. We want to back you. We want to list you. Because if you look at a tier one or tier two exchanges, they have listing agents that go and find them projects. But if, you know, Coinbase or Kraken doesn't care about listing a new project, whatever, their volume is just insane. Yeah. But we want to go to new ecosystems and we will say, hey, we want to offer you and onboard you into our ecosystem come and join us, come and help us build and we will help you build as well and effectively capture that on-chain volume that doesn't have a home on a centralized exchange. So that is effectively our value proposition to say that, hey, if you've got a solid white paper, you've got a smart contract audit, you've got a team that's willing to build and develop and you actually have a viable idea, we are willing to take the chance on you. And I don't think that is the general... I would not say thesis, but I wouldn't say that's a general perspective of, let's say, tier ones and tier twos. So we want to help build, we want to help drive, and we want to help you know, accelerate growth. And this is where we migrate to where we are needed as a, as a collective. Like I mentioned, a blockchain agnostic. So we initially, we started on Concordium, integrated Solana. Now we're looking at Aptos, then Neo, BSC. So whatever and wherever we need to be, we proceed to. Yeah, I also have to add on to Fred. Sure, yeah, yeah. We also make sure that we look at where transaction and gas are being looked at. We're kind of like, we actually, we. it's not that we don't like heat, but we want to make it more flexible to get, for people to get into Web3. And we, I don't like the feeling of exclusivity. I wanted the feeling of inclusivity. So we, so even our transaction fees are really low, like 1.1% to 1.5%. Our concordium transaction fee is only around 2%. And that's standard. In NFT space, um, a lot of their platforms, they have around like 2 to 2.5%. 2, 2 we want to be able to be easy because we want people to go to our platform. So we're really focusing on growth. So it's kind of like a giveaway, basically, because we want to be able to help a lot of people be creators and projects or from being a creator to an NFT project basically and the the drawback is it scares them in terms of like the technicalities the blockchain the gas fees we want to be a quick entry and in the future if they grow with us we grow as well so it's kind of like the whole thank you between aptos between near solana lower fees lower costs lower barrier of entry yeah, sure. exactly Manry. and a lot of a lot of ingredients that really you know set your you uh the you know your project apart from the rest of uh, rest of the ones that are out there, right? Like um, we mentioned, a, a lot of uh, in, in pillars, I would say, of of a strong um, focus to uh, growth, like you mentioned, as well as community. And uh, seeing that, you know, like you mentioned about being chain agnostic uh, and really being more accommodating to a whole new uh, audience, really in in, in, in any capacity. Uh, really shows, yeah, like you said, there is little to no barrier of entry here, uh, which is obviously exciting to see. Um, so I guess maybe we could also focus uh, or switch gears here and, and look at, you know, uh, the environment that you're looking to create. It's obviously going to need a robust uh, native token to provide utility uh, to fuel this environment. So could you tell us about the native token and what kind of utility it aims to provide? All right, sure. Yeah. So our native token is called BT and effectively it will drive the ecosystem forward. So let's just start on the victory egg side. So it will, your um, gas will be done in BT. So extremely cost efficient, extremely cheap. You know, it's built on, uh, it's built on Solana. So let's talk about transaction fees. So transaction fees will be done in BT. Liquidity provision, staking, you know, cross-chain staking, cross-chain liquidity provision, all of that is effectively being done by the BT token. So, you know, it does everything I would say that, you know, inclusive ecosystem token does. So let's have a look at something like uh, FTT, no, not maybe not FTT, but, you know, like BNB. We don't have our own blockchain, but effectively this drives the ecosystem going forward. And at the same time, if you hold BT, 
you get discounts on listings, discount on NFT projects, you know, offer that is shared to you. Um, call it like not really an insider community, but there is inherent value to being part of this ecosystem. So effectively, it will drive the ecosystem forward. And not only on Big Tree X, but Big Tree X, Big Tree NFT, as well as the Concordium name service. So transaction fees, liquidity provision, staking, cross-chain staking, everything will be able to, we will, you'll be able to do everything with a BT token. And I think what differentiates the token from, I would say, you know, just your gen general token is that, you know, you can buy it and you can try to sell it for like a higher price or like you can focus on price appreciation, which is obviously very important. Nobody wants a token that's down 99%. That's not very sexy. Uh, so you want to see upwards growth. But at the same time, you need to deliver, you know, value to the ecosystem. Like the question should be once again, why should I own BT token? What is the reasoning behind it? And you can look at it, uh, you know, the features like liquidity provision, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, I think if I was invested and I was looking at this video right now, I'd be thinking if Big Tree has a good idea or good ideas and they're making the right moves. And, you know, by buying BT token, we support the ecosystem and we support all participants in the ecosystem, myself, including as a buyer, you should kind of see it as an investment, not just for yourself, but for the ecosystem as a whole. And if the BT token appreciates the system and the ecosystem appreciates as well in terms of growth, in terms of metrics, in terms of client acquisitions, and it's a symbiotic relationship between the investor the big tree ecosystem and all participants. So yes, that is the angle. And I would say the inherent focus and the inherent utility besides you know, the traditional things like staking, liquidity provision, gas fees, transactions, all of that, that would be the main focus of a big tree token. You, you know, uh, Freddie, you mentioned a lot of uh, really important points towards uh, really having a, a native token to pro that provides value. But not only does that, but, you know, really uh, gives investors a reason to hold on. Like you said, it's an investment within, within the ecosystem as well as, you know, your personal investment. Um, so that that's very key, I think. A and um, I, I really want to find out, you know, with all that we've talked about so far, you know, there's it's quite the ambitious project. There has to be an, an even more ambitious team. So could you tell us a little more about the team that's involved? with cre making this dream a reality? Okay, so uh, in terms of the team, uh, we have a group of, I think most of our developers have, I need to think, <laughs> they have three to five years experience working in the blockchain space, but from different projects. So a lot of their experience, they work in Solana. Some of them work in a blockchain called, yeah, some of them work in a blockchain called Near, and then some of them work in, other blockchains, I forgot specifically, but most of our developers have experience in the blockchain space. We don't hire people who doesn't have an experience in the blockchain space. It's a it's a number one requirement. And a lot of like the a lot of our projects, we do um, security audits as well. So Ferdi actually facilitates most of our security audits with a third party um, provider. And at the same time, our marketing team, we have an exceptional team of marketers um, ranging from um, FB ads um, experts to Google ads experts. And at the same time, content creators. So they do, they do content. Um, they're uh, one of our, mar part of our marketing team, they're also writers in the blockchain space. So um, a lot of the people in our team, I'd say it's not, it's not a small team, but it's a fairly medium-sized team with a lot of people and experts in different fields. So we're very kind of exclusive as well in terms of like, even though not a lot of our members doesn't have like experience in the blockchain space, it gives us a valid view of our outside opinions. Like for example, like I like crypto in terms of design, like uh, it's very human, it's very friendly. So a lot of our designers, they usually work in blockchain, but at the same time, we always try to think like in a ways like in our team, like everything should be like human friendly, user friendly, or it's if it's complicated, remove it. <laughs> so I think a lot of the people have a lot of experience, but in the core being of our team, um, KISS, I think keeping things simple is the number one rule. I'm sorry I went there, but that's it. <laughs> no, that's yeah, I'm just explaining because that's everything I do and tell them like, if it's complicated, remove. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that's that's really like, you know, that's the, that's the formula, right? I mean, 
uh, w why change it if it, if it isn't broken? Like, if it's not providing any sort of efficient solution, then take it out. And I, I think that's that's the best way to look at it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, and it seems like your team has, uh, like you mentioned, a, a whole variety of uh, experiences both in blockchain and outside of blockchain industry, which uh, I think is the best, uh, really the best uh, uh, route because it gives you uh, perspectives from different fields, different areas, uh, really yeah. creating an, a new uh, outlook within the space, right? Uh, and so I also want to talk about the founders as well. So sure. founders Joha is actually part of Bitcoin Korea. So he came from Korea, but he he's he's been around everywhere. So he's part of Beam, and he was actually one of the Beam Africa. It's actually um, before from before Concordium started. That I think it was Beam. Basically, the team from Beam started from Concordium, something like that. And then Agbona and and Joha they met through Beam. And then basically, Joha and Agbona, they both have experience in the crypto space, like a wide range of experience. So I think decision making wise, like we have the best, uh, we have our founder to know everything in terms of the blockchain space because he's a trader himself. Mm -hmm. He's also one of those people who advocates for Bitcoin. <laughs> so I think um, in terms of where the company is going, I have big trust with the founding team, the core team, because um, they're not just nobodies. They have a lot of experience in the crypto space. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Go ahead. Awesome. How about you, Fritz? Also, Ferdy yeah. and Mark. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. From the crypto space. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, just based on what Manu was saying, so we've got, you know, I think 29 members, you know, ranging all over the world from Europe, Asia, Africa, even at a time from the US and Northern America. And at the same time, the interests and the specialties and the expertise ranges from, like in my case, traditional finance, having worked for, in TradFi for about five years, Minery and e-commerce. So I actually come from the old traditional finance world. So kind of like a heathen in this space, you know, um, you know, everybody wants to like bring down the banks and whatever. Like I come from, I come from that world, Minery in the e-commerce space, Joe, and one of the other founders, you know, having... Um, you know, a few years, you know, since about 2013, 2014, that they've been involved in this space. So our team, you know, we're still a, a medium sized team, as many said, but we're well funded, well educated in, you know, the crypto space and the blockchain space as a whole. And we also bring with it, you know, not just the expertise, you know, how to develop projects, but also something that I think is lacking in the general crypto space uh, is sometimes you would see these brilliant projects, you know, the technology is amazing, but at the same time, we need to incorporate real world elements to it, you know, sales, um, you know, professionalism, we need to drive this industry forward because at the same time, there's brilliance regarding the technological innovations, but the management, uh, I mean, let's just take something like Celsius, you know, recently the insolvency mm -hmm. situation there, that's just unacceptable. Or, you know, the UST, uh, and the base quote was steady lads deploying more capital. So we're talking about, we're talking about an $18 billion stable coin going down and you, you're tweeting, quote unquote, steady lads deploying some capital that's and this is a this is a literal quote it's i'm not even making this up wow. this is a literal quote from do Kwon himself <laughs> and how he's still tweeting you know it's just ridiculous so we need to do something else so yeah we've got a brilliant team i love working with you know everybody in this team it's it's stressful and it's challenging and sometimes as the space is but um, we're confident that we're building a very mm -hmm. significant project and we would like to contribute to the space you know even in a in a small way to say that hey you know we at big tree we helped push the space forward in our own small but meaningful way. So yeah, that's yeah. Uh, kind of like my two cents. And another one is our design teams are the gens. <laughs> yeah. So they're advid, advocate of the whole crypto space. So I think a lot of, a lot of hiring a degen as a marketer and at the same time as a designer gives you an idea that this is what I want to build. This is the product that I want. This is the product that I want to improve. And that's a shout out to group. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That's really cool, and, and um, yeah, no, it, there, there's uh, again a lot of a lot of experience on your team, like like you mentioned. Uh, very cool to see that you know there's just a, a lot a lot of different perspectives, I think, and that's gonna help out. Um, so let, let's switch gears here and um, actually move on to some of the questions that were pre-selected from our announcement, and these questions were actually handpicked from our YouTube channel. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull them up here. Okay, so our first question 
comes from Sojib Gaming. And this person asks, Victory's first goal is to develop a functional and robust trading platform for the exchange of digital assets in a centralized and decentralized manner. So, what strategies has Victory put in place to help attract high volumes and liquidity to this trading platform? Okay, yeah, sure. I'll begin with that one. So, if you look at tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5 exchange, so pretty much everybody who's not in the top 10, or let's call the top 20, Liquidity concerns is a massive problem, and it's a it's a problem on chain as well. You know, with these you know these decentralized trading platforms, that if liquidity is not sufficient, malicious players can come in, and you know, they can manipulate the prices, they can you know drain liquidity pools, and it is a big problem. So it's actually a very good question. So to answer that, we recently discussed this topic at length with the core team of the business team, and uh, one of our um, team members mark who recently joined us he told us that he had worked on a project you know here in africa one of africa's biggest brokerages or not brokerages exchanges and that there is an agreement that you can um, acquire from binance so binance has this program called binance link where if you have a certain amount of trading volume i believe it was about two or think two or twenty million dollars per month and you've got about 20,000 users, you can gain access to their liquidity as well as their order books. So Binance will then help you and assist you with liquidity as well as, you know, trading management, order book management and all that. So Binance at the same time is kind of leading the pack here. And, you know, for any Binance link partner, you can gain access to their internal software, to their liquidity. And this is how we believe we can proceed. So yes, you need to develop a robust ecosystem, but a lot of these words are kind of just like buzzwords, you know, build a, build a robust ecosystem, do this, attract liquidity. We need to focus on establishing partnership with the relevant stakeholders in the industry. And the more relevancy you gain and more credibility you gain, it's kind of like a positive flywheel effect where this volume is attracted and then liquidity just becomes a byproduct of the initial decisions that have been made as opposed to something that you just do initially. So you kind of have to see this as a step-by-step -step situation where you have to consistently grow the exchange. You have to list high quality projects. You have to be smart in your marketing to kind of like develop a robust ecosystem, not just in terms of your products and your service offerings, but also in terms of your kind of like the liquidity and the, um, that, you, that you're going to get. So yeah, we're looking at Binance Link and this is something that we'll probably be looking to integrate over the next six months because if you look at the Binance Link partners, they've got about a thousand right now. And I would say, and I think this is objectively a fact that if you are partnered with Binance in any way, shape or form, I think that's a good decision. I think that's a pretty good decision, you know, considering, you know, don't fade CZ, like, like just don't fade him. I mean, did you see that, uh, that billboard on, on the Burj, uh, or I think the Burj Khalifa or, you know, the one in Dubai, it's, it's massive. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily bet against Binance or, so yeah, that's kind of like how, how we're looking to proceed. Oh no. And, uh, like very, I couldn't agree more with you. The fact that Binance is just the powerhouse that it is now and, you know, we've seen also the transition uh, in the past couple of months uh, um, in terms of their structure to really uh, be more open and, and accommodating to the regulatory advances that are happening across the Correct. world as well. Correct. Correct. So you can tell that they're taking this very seriously. They are. Uh, they're. They're trying. They're trying to be the ones that stick around the longest and uh, really create the the foundation for uh, you know projects to step. You use yeah. a stepping stone, right? Exactly. And if you look at, you know, if, if you as a project, you know, you want to achieve any modicum of success, just look at, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yes, be creative. Yes, be innovative. But, you know, look at what the giants are doing and then apply these same methodologies to yourself. So if Binance is very keen and very bullish on KYC and regulations and going forward, I would think that you should probably be too as yeah. well because, you know, a rising, I think it's a rising tide, you know, lifts all boats and, yeah. you know, Binance is a very, very, very big wave. Yeah. So, yeah, so you've got Binance, you've got Sam Bankman-Fried on the, on the uh, FTX side. So, you know, a lot of people say, you know, this is, you know, bear market, you know, crypto is going to zero. I don't think so. I think it's going to change the world. Well, I know so, but it, it will probably take a bit of time. So, yeah. For sure. And, uh, you know, just just uh, before we move on to the next question, it's just really not good to hear that 
you know, your primary focus isn't on grabbing liquidity, but rather creating value that has uh, liquidity as the byproduct, right? Correct. Uh, so th th that's a very, very, uh, uh, very interesting perspective there. Um, so let's move on to question number two here. And this is from Ha Dao Kuang, which, uh, who asks, currently most project, sorry, currently most projects and platforms are in English. How will your project project reach non-English local communities and make it easy for people around the world to use your service. Do you have any plan to develop the project in other languages? So we do have plans to develop it in other languages as well. Actually, most of our communities are in Russia because a lot when the project started, it actually started in Russia and Europe. So Concordium, their community is composed of Danish people, Swedish people. So, but of, of course, when we try to develop the roadmap, we started looking at Solana and it's, uh, it's most of their communities are in the US, in Africa and other Southeast Asian countries. So we do plan to develop it in other languages based on the country where more specifically get users from because we want to highlight more of the strength of that countries and eventually going to retarget other countries as well so right now we're focused on southeast asia in russia and of course africa where Freddy is and nigeria and of course eventually we're going to focus on the us and then europe but right now, um, English, we're starting with English because it's kind of like the universal language, but we're looking into supporting a multi-support language in the coming future. So hopefully by this year. Yeah. Yeah. That, and I, I feel, you know, that that's one of the things that uh, really um, uh, is overlooked these days just to have, you know, that accommodation. So it's good to see that you're, you're going to have that implemented even as early as this year. So that's really, that's really good. Let's move on to our last question uh, here from Josem Ahmed. And Josem asks, what is the most ambitious goals of the project in the future? What is Big 3 most important next priority according to the project roadmap? Is the team equipped with sufficient funds and communities to meet that goal? Okay, yeah, I'll take this one. So yes, yes, and yes. So. You know, Big Tree is a very well-funded company that has been around since 2019. And we are looking, I forgot to actually tell us, you know, one of the things that I'm most bullish on right now, you know, even given the current bear market, is that Big Tree will be launching its public sale come, I would say, the first or the second week of November. And with this public sale, we will also be looking to onboard users from the variety of exchanges we will be utilizing. We were looking at three centralized exchanges as well as one uh, IDO. And uh, I don't want to say, you know, give any information, but, you know, you could possibly be looking at tier two, tier one listings. And I'm not talking about somebody, you know, in the top, top 50. I'm talking about some big guns here. And we want to leverage that and say that, hey, you know, we've been developing this company and this project or this collective for quite a while. And we want to onboard, you know, users to Big Tree X, Big Tree NFT, CNS. So that would be our first goal, I would say, for let's say the fourth quarter of the year is to have a successful public sale to raise. Uh, we're looking to raise, I think, 475,000 US dollars because you know, the bear market is also here. You need to be realistic as well, given your observations. So we're looking at three centralized exchanges, five listings uh, on tier ones as well as tier twos, higher tier twos, and then also on chain. So we're looking to approach on chain, you know, either via Solanium or Radium for our BT token, as well as the centralized exchanges. So that would be quarter fourth, you know, our major goal, because when we do this and when we pull it off successfully, it will also allow us to further expand our operations. And, you know, as mentioned earlier, the call looking, you know, to onboard the Aptos ecosystem, you know, the SUI ecosystem, and we need money to do that, you know, but yes, I think that is, we can do all of these things, but the next few weeks, and I would say the next few months will be pivotal, pivotal in this company's history, but I believe we're very well equipped and very well funded. And um, yeah, I think you see Big Tree, you see a lot of tokens, you know, listing on, you know, whatever exchange. But I think once you see what exchanges we are working with right now, and I don't know, Manu, do you think I should just, should yeah, I you say? Should, or... You should tell them. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to say, okay. So they know. All right, all right so, okay. So we're looking at the tier two tier one exchange that we're currently in communication with would be Gate.io. 
as well as KuCoin. Wow. So yeah, that's not too bad, I would say, for a company that's been around a few years. And then on the tier two side, a little bit higher tier one, we're looking at buy true, bit forex, uh, you know, possibly P2P, B2B. And I think the one thing I would like to add here is, is that none of the exchanges we're looking at has a lower daily volume of two billion dollars. So you know, we're going all out for sure. And, uh, you know, that's some exciting news to hear on, uh, on OIG's channel. So, you know, once thank again, thank you for um, really letting our community know of some incredible news coming up. Um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think, I think everybody is going to be interested in what's going to be happening over the next few months because, you know, as I mentioned, we're looking to, you know, onboard that, uh, I would say, that liquidity and also that volume coming to Aptos, you know, in, in the immediate. And uh, whether it will be long-term sustainable, well, that's up to market forces to decide. But uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. And uh, I think all parties will be interested in what we are doing uh, in the immediate from our VCs, backers, you know, just the general community ecosystem. And I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite happy and I'm, I'm quite satisfied with what we've been doing. And uh, I, wished it were, I wish it was a bull market, but unfortunately that's not the case. So uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta uh, make do with what we have, and I think um, as we mentioned, we've got a strong ecosystem, we've got a strong set of products, and now it's just up for us to have a public sale and then just proceed from there. For sure, and that sounds exciting. So can't wait to see it happen. So that concludes our Twitter question segment. Um, so now we'll move on to uh, really wrapping up the show here, and I'd like to talk about you know your roadmap uh, and from two different perspectives. The first one being. You know, looking back, uh, really some of the uh, milestones and accomplishments that, uh, you know, you both are truly proud of and then looking into the future of what you're most excited about. Okay, so what we are most proud of, I would say being able to launch three fully working pro um, projects or products within the space of 18 months, I think a year and a half, I think that was pretty impressive, as well as having the developers implement multiple languages and within the programming. So I think if we look at it from a past in perspective, I think it's very impressive that we've worked on three projects, multi-chain, multi-chain integration, as well as, you know, just for, like I said, for general, the general projects. But I think going forward, I would say the thing that most excites me is the cross-chain integration of Solana into, in, into the NFT marketplace, as well as, you know, striving more towards, you know, implementing all the big three tokens features within, let's say, quarter four, quarter one of next year. So, yeah, I would say, um, you know, striving to be blockchain agnostic, you know, approaching the Aptos ecosystem, onboarding projects from there. And then, yes, just to keep on developing, because right now, and I'll also release a little bit of information here, we're building one more new project oh, you know, wow. over the next few weeks. So, yeah, we're going to be building a DEX on the Aptos blockchain as well. So now it would be on, so we build projects now on Solana, on Cordium, and within a few weeks, and within a few months, we'll have one on Aptos as well. So yeah, I think, you know, for any individual watching this, if one wanted to gauge the quality of a team or wanted to see, you know, if, you know, this is something that I should put my money in, I think the question you should ask yourself is, do you know of any, you know, ambitious team, let's call them small to medium sized team that had not only has three, but four working projects, two tier one listings, high tier two listings and onboarding of, you know, more than a hundred thousand members that we are looking to add to our socials. If you can say, yes, I know, of these projects then you can leave us but i think in a bear market right now if i wanted to make a solid bet and to say that hey you know these guys are trying it's a bit of an interesting concept and you know i think it's ambitious i think it's very ambitious i think sometimes maybe even a little bit too ambitious for like our own uh, but you know that's you have to dream hey romeo so yeah, yeah i'm three not three projects four so yeah that's something we're very keen on and i'm looking forward to see some volume on uh on those tier one exchanges. i'm very very excited about the tier one exchange yeah. it's it's quite tricky to work with them um they're not as uh i would say to, as quick to respond as the other but uh you know something like a cool coin or gate listing that does carry some weight does it not for sure no no for sure yeah. I, and um you know like you mentioned there's just a a lot that's going on and even in a bear market you guys are busy yeah. building, you know, 
That's, it's they said see. that um, peop- um, builders who build in the bear market are there to last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. because if you're building in the bear market, some people think you're crazy, you're launching, because it's actually an internal joke. Like, we're the yeah. only company, we're not the only company, but we're the kind of like the company who strives to launch on a bear market. But yeah. as any product in the space, um, regardless if it's the bear market or the bull market, if, even if the conditions are not good, um, as long as there's a product fit and there's also like a community that backs up the whole product, then you're good. Exactly. So it's not about how the conditions um, affects as well the product, but how are you gaining users? How are you acquiring customers is the most important thing. And maybe, maybe we're actually gearing towards to we're actually building the foundation to be a strong company in the bear market and be a great company in the bull market so i think that's that that's how we are as a team we're ambitious we're yeah. we're built to last <laughs> well no it, so, it, it shows it shows and, and you know like with with everything we've spoken about today you know your your both of your att- attention to detail your and, and and the company's focus on being inclusive within uh, different perspectives in, in the space and just having more uh, more communication with the community, but also building something during the bear market. It it sh- it shows, uh, and I'm sure all my viewers, our 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 viewers can agree that um, it's just it shows that you know there is integrity here. There is something being built that um, it goes beyond. Uh, what the status quo is right now yeah. and uh, you know it's very exciting to see and be a part of this so uh, Ferdi and Minri it was great speaking to you today about uh, Victory um, wh- where can our viewers find more about Victory oh they can um, google it via victory.io or they can check our our twitter pages um, our social media like um, at twitter I think at, at victory underscore finance yeah. and as well as our TG group, which is victory, tg.me slash victory finance and our discord group as well. So our discord is vic, discord.com slash victory finance. So they can check us out there. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, to all our viewers, all the official links will be in the description down below. So make sure to follow and uh, subscribe to all of victory finances, uh, uh, media, social media platforms. Um, so and once again, Ferdy and Minri, it was amazing talking to you, both of you about uh, Victory Finance, and we can't wait to see more and have you on again, hopefully. All right, Thank thanks, Romeo. So we appreciate it. All right, Thank bye. You. Bye. Well, OIG family, that wraps up another episode in our AMA series. Remember, all the official links to Victory Finance as well as OIG will be in the description below. And if you like the content, please subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and smash the like button to really help out OIG. Until next time, we'll see you soon.